The following program is paid for by Main Street Living. Hi, I'm Pastor Matthew Harrison, President of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Starting in the late 1950s, Lutheran Hour Ministries aired a television program called This is the Life in their efforts to bring Christ to the nations. It was a critically acclaimed show that used story and drama to convey eternal truths from God's Word. And it featured actors who were just getting started in their careers. Recently, Lutheran Hour Ministries, in partnership with Main Street Living, remastered and brought to HD quality about 50 of these programs. And even though the props and styles are of the 1960s and 70s, the subject matter is still very relevant. So please sit back and enjoy this week's episode of This is the Life. So many odds and ends can accumulate over the years. <laughs> Corner iron. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of a very sad thing that happened some time ago. It was a corner iron just like this one that caused a big change in Roy Baxter's life. I'd like to tell you about it. Hiya, Carl. Hello, Roy. How's the Baxter Metalworks? Couldn't be better. Well, I'm glad to hear it. What can I do for you? Dinah asked me to bring home some bunion plasters for Jenny. For Jenny? Mm-hmm. Don't tell me you finally got her to wear shoes. No, but her slippers hurt. Good old Jenny. How's she been? Oh, fine. You realize next Monday she's going to be 70 years old? 70? You'd never believe it. She's been in our family for 40 years. You know, I have a hard time realizing sometimes that she's not a relative. I've known her almost that long myself. Remember when we used to raid her cookie jar? Oh, she still makes them just as good. Oh, talking about good things to eat, I better get home. Lina said we we're gonna have an early dinner. How much do we have? 26 cents. 26, yeah, and I got the right change. Say hello to the missus. And tell Jenny there's plenty more where those came from. Okay, see you later, Carl. <laughs> Bye. on your feet, and maybe you won't be so grouchy. There's nothing the matter with my feet. I just, just like, like to be, be comfortable. comfortable. <laughs> here, here. Will you ever grow up? Well, I hope not, Jenny. Roy, I hate to have to remind you again, but I just brought up those preserves from the basement, and that railing is still shaky. You've simply got to fix it. I know, I know. Mm -hmm. Open the top stair. Mm -hmm. And those old papers have been getting to be a fire hazard. So this Saturday afternoon... Wait a minute. Know... This Saturday afternoon, I'm playing golf. Oh, now, really, you've been promising Oh, don't me... get excited, honey. It's all going to be fixed on Saturday. But you just said you're going to play I just golf. talked to Jake. He's going to come over and see that everything's all fixed up. Well, it's about time. Yes, it's about time. I get it. Hello. Oh, hello, Doug. You mean now? No. Okay, I'll be right down. Got to go back to plant. Well, what about dinner? Oh, I'm sorry, dear, but Doug says something's come up and it's an emergency. You go ahead and eat. I'll be right back. Oh, these men. And I fixed such a good dinner. Yes, you did. 
All right, Doug, what's this all about? I got a call from the Lawson brothers about that last batch of corner irons we shipped them. What's the matter with it? Here's one they sent us back by special messenger. They got complaints about them breaking on the job. Well, I can't understand that. Do you suppose the metal you bought at that bankruptcy auction was faulty? That could have been. I never thought to test it. Well, what do the Lawson brothers want us to do about it? Well, they want us to replace the entire shipment with new stock that we can guarantee. Naturally, we'll have to do that. That means all the other shipments should be called back, too. Why? Well, if the metal you bought at that bankruptcy auction was faulty, and we mixed it in with our regular stock, there's no way of telling which of the corner irons are substandard. That's right. To get a few bad ones out of circulation, we'd have to pull in everything we've sent out. It would take us weeks to test it. Oh, that might wreck confidence in our company. What do you want to do? Well, I think the best thing to do is to handle each complaint separately, when and if they happen. After all, it may never occur again. Well, this might be the only kickback. But on the other hand, can you afford to take the chance? Oh, I don't think it's going to be that serious. Besides, Doug, I, I just can't afford to take that kind of a loss. You're the boss. Set for church. Just as soon as I get a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Here you are. Oh, thank you. Why don't you sit down, Jenny? Oh, I have to hurry or I'll be late. Toast. I wish you folks had let me fix you a good breakfast on Sundays. Now, toast and coffee one day a week is very good for us. Mm. Well, I'll fix you a good dinner as soon as I get home. Mm -hmm. I wish I didn't have to wear shoes to church. Poor Jenny. Wait till she sees what we get her for her birthday. Oh, do you think the shoes will fit her? Well, they should. The orthopedic people made a pattern out of the pair I took down. Mm, I still wish we could have gotten her to go for a fitting. You know how many times we tried that. I know. I hope she likes them. Well, she will. More coffee, dear? Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Say, I've got an idea. What? Well, why, don't, why don't we make uh, tomorrow Jenny's day? Oh. And she'll be our guest. We won't let her lift her hand, do anything around here. And I'll help you with breakfast. Good. And I'll get a nice dinner with the cake and all the trimmings, and I won't let her lift a finger, huh? Yeah. Oh, and I forgot, Carl and Anna wanted to drop by tomorrow evening, too. They got a little something for Jenny. We can have a little party. Wonderful. Mm, but I'm afraid I'm going to have a hard time keeping Jenny out of the kitchen. I imagine you will. Huh? Well, say, dear, would you mind buttering me another piece of toast? So you like my cooking, hmm? Oh, it'll do, it'll do. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, Jake left his bill for you yesterday. Oh, he got the railing fixed. Uh-huh. And he also cleaned out the junk in the basement. You know, he's really a good worker. Fine. Now I can just relax for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh, Nina, everything tasted so good. Oh, it should. Everything I know about cooking, I learned from you. <laughs> I hope you saved enough room for some birthday cake. Birthday cake? Certainly. Oh, now, you just sit down. Just stay right where you are. But please. Yes, Jenny, that's right. We'll take care of it. Oh, Carl, it's beautiful. God bless you, Jenny. God bless you, Jenny. God bless you, dear Jenny. God bless you today. You shouldn't be doing this. Jenny, make a wish. Oh, what did you 
wish. Oh, I can't tell you that. Oh, come on. Oh, it wasn't. It wouldn't come true. Oh, I well, all right. Cut the cake. Oh, it's so beautiful. I almost hate to spoil it. Yeah, there we are. Oh, they feel wonderful. Just like my bare feet. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> now, you sit down, Jenny. We got more. Here's a little something from the fishers. Did you make these? Yes, I did, Jenny, just for you. Oh, they're beautiful. Thank you so much. They're beautiful. I've got something for you folks. For us? For us. I'll go and get it. It's down the basement. Oh, now, take it easy, Jenny. You sit down. I'll go get it. Oh, oh, you wouldn't know where it was. It's some of that cinnamon stick preserves that Carl likes so much. Oh, oh that's easy. I'll get it. No, there's no label on it. I know just where it is. Jenny, why don't you wait until sometime you're down there? Oh, nonsense. It won't take a minute. Uh, Hopeless. I have to go sit down. I haven't tasted Jenny's cinnamon preserves for years. <laughs> They're just as good as they ever were. Well, you know, I've tried the recipe several times, but it just doesn't seem to turn out like Jenny. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Get a doctor, quick. Don't move, Jenny. Just lie quietly. Just can't understand it. Jake fixed that railing Saturday, and he's a good workman. Never mind about the railing, Roy. Let's just hope and pray that Jenny's all right. Well, how is she? She'll live. But she'll never walk again. The doctor... I'm sorry, Roy, but her back is broken. There isn't a chance, not at her age. Oh, no. Jake, Roy Baxter. Yeah, pretty awful, right? Say, Jake, where'd you get that corner iron you repaired the railing with? Sunset Hardware. When? Saturday. No, the screws held all right. The corner iron just broke in half. No, no, I'm not blaming you, Jake. All right, thanks. Getting around that chair, huh? Yeah, of course. It falls apart. Falls apart. Yeah. <laughs> do you know that's exactly what happened to that corner iron that Jake used on Roy's stairs? How do you know? Well, I saw Jake today and he told me about it. You know, I can't understand how Jake would do such a bad job. It wasn't his fault. The iron he used was faulty and it came from Roy's factory. Couldn't be intentional. I can't blame Roy for that. No, I suppose not. Anyone heard how Jenny is? Nanny came into the store today to get a few things for her. They brought Jenny home from the hospital a couple of days ago. How is she? <laughs> her usual cheerful self. The only thing she's unhappy about is that she can't get into the kitchen to prepare dinner. <laughs> she can't get used to being waited on. 
<laughs> you know, that sounds like Jenny. Mm. <laughs> she seen Al Roy last. She's taking it pretty bad. She's worried about him. Well, I certainly hope for Jenny's sake, yes, and mine is too, that Roy gets a hold of himself. Yeah, let's hope so. Say, Anna sent me down here to tell you dinner's ready and you ought to get washed up. You tell Anna I'll be there when the chair is finished. <laughs> I've been lying here night after night, listening to you pacing back and forth. If you're worried about me, Roy, I want you to stop it. I don't blame you for what happened to me. Will you do something for me? Anything in the world, Jenny. Whenever I feel like you do now, this is where I always go for comfort. Roy, will you look in there for what you need? I know how you feel. You've sinned. But God will forgive your sins if you only ask it. And as surely as I have forgiven you, I know that God will forgive you. That's why Jesus died. So that all our sins could be forgiven. That's what the Bible means when it says, the blood of Jesus his son cleanseth us from all sin. That prescription ready, Carl? Oh, just a minute, Doctor. Jenny's pretty bad, is she? She's developing pneumonia. I wish we could move her to the hospital, but with her back in that condition, it's too dangerous. I've ordered an oxygen tent. We're doing everything possible. i better get right over there. If there's anything I can do, let me know. Thanks, Carl. Hey, I'm sorry. We did everything we could for Jenny. We know, Doctor. Thanks. Roy. When Jenny said she wanted you to have her Bible, I'm sure she meant that you would find the comfort you seek in the Word of God. Hello, Roy. 
glad to see you. Hello, Grandpa. Is Carl around? No, he's out for a while. Anything I can do? Well, I... I just wanted to talk to him about my house. I decided to sell it. I'm going to put it in the hands of a realtor, but I thought possibly Carl might know someone who was interested in him. Well, he might. But, uh, how come you're selling? Grandpa, I can't live around there any longer. Everything about the whole place reminds me of how much and what I did to her. Do you think that running away will erase what's in your mind? I don't know. But I've got to get away from those constant reminders. Like her Bible that she wanted me to have. Can't even touch it. Can't bring myself to dispose of it because I... I know how much it meant to her. Maybe if you read it, you'd find the very thing that you're looking for. I don't know, Grandpa. I don't know. Roy, why must we leave this place? Because I just can't live here any longer. Couldn't we just go away for a little while? Wouldn't that help? No, that wouldn't help. The only thing that'll help is for me to... Oh, Roy. It's getting late. There's nothing more we can do about it tonight. Why don't you go to bed? I'll be up in a little while, dear. All right. Don't be too late, hmm? I won't. But if we walk in the light to see us in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Frankly, Pastor Martin, I don't know what it means. That's why I came to you for help. Jenny was a wise woman. She had a great faith in her Savior and a remarkable understanding of God's truths. Roy, what you did in your handling of those corner irons was something less than honest. And anything less than honest is a sin in the sight of God. That's why it's so necessary to know that we have God's forgiveness. I imagine that's why Jenny was so eager that you read her Bible. You see, the Bible tells us that God hates sin and that he has pronounced his curse upon it. Even those who've never read the Bible have a voice within them that tells them that sin is wrong and that there's a higher power that sits in judgment on everything they do. I have a feeling that it's that voice within you that's been troubling you ever since the death of Jenny. You've had an inner sense of guilt. And it's that sense of sin against God, which in the final analysis, called for God's forgiveness. Is that what Jenny was trying to tell me? I'm sure she was. 
That's why she's selected that particular passage. She kept telling me that God had forgiven me. That's the part I, I don't understand. Let me put it this way. When Jesus died upon the cross, he died for you and me. As the Son of God, he died to pay the penalty for every sin of every sinner, yours and mine. And now, those who acknowledge him as their divine redeemer, they put their fears away. Their debts to God have all been paid. Their sins forgiven. Forgiven because Christ died in their place and shed his blood for them. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. That's it exactly, Roy. From all sin, no matter what we've done. If we'll only believe him. You know, Pastor Martin, I'm just beginning to realize what a wonderful gift Jenny left me. This program has been produced by the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, with congregations throughout the United States and Canada, and is dedicated to the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God and Savior of the world. I hope you found this program to be both entertaining and insightful. Even though the show was filmed decades ago, the concerns of those days seem to parallel many situations of today. We'll be back next week with another episode of This is the Life. In the meantime, I invite you to seek further wisdom from God's Word, the Bible, and I invite you to visit one of our congregations in your area. We are the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and you will find our 6,000 congregations listed at www.lcms.org. This program has been brought to you by Main Street Living, which relies on the generosity of viewers to support this programming. They appreciate your prayers and would also appreciate your financial support. You can view additional episodes of This is the Life on the Main Street Living website. Thanks for watching, and join us again next week, same time, same channel, for another episode of This is the Life. Send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. This has been a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod and its member churches.